Yo, what is up guys? So for today, we're going to be talking about Destiny 2. Now, specifically, we're going to be looking at Hawkmoon. The first thing we're going to be talking about is basically how to get the weapon, what's the best ways to do it. And then after that, we're going to be talking about like my thoughts and concerns and essentially what makes Hawkmoon uh, different than what it was in Destiny 1. So let's look at some of the quest steps. First and foremost, before you can even start this quest step, you have to actually complete Season of the Hunt, the little story that it has essentially just complete your first hunt and then after that the spider will actually have the quest step available to you so make sure you're caught up with this with the hunt at least do a one hunt and then after that spider will have it for you the only reason i know this is because me and my friend were actually getting hawk moon or at least i was getting it and then he couldn't get it because he didn't do anything for season of the hunt so make sure you do season of the hunt stuff first after that he uh spider will give you a mission which essentially is, he's talking about feathers i'll have a video of where i sh i found all the feathers uh right now but i love doing this by myself so if you do know like enough of the destinations in destiny 2 i recommend you just go through it blind because it was a lot of fun but again if you're just trying to get this weapon as fast as you can i have the video up right now so i'll be right back
So once you get all the feathers, you're going to get a story mission from the crow. He is going to basically tell you to go to a lost sector. And it's funny because originally I was like, oh, cool. So we're just going to go through a lost sector. Immediately was super depressed about it because like I was hoping like for something cool. And then after you complete the lost sector, it opens up to a new area and then it gets even better. It's this. I loved it. It was great. I'm not going to spoil anything just because I think the mission was really fun and cool. So, yeah, uh, after you do the story mission, you'll get the first the first tedious mission, which is essentially get 50 motes of power. The way I did it was I went to the one area with the fallen stuff in Europa where you get your stasis power faster. If it was any other class, it'd probably be easier. But since I was on my hunter and hunter super is pretty dog shit. I was not able to get my modes of power as fast as I would like them to. Honestly, just just go do either. I wouldn't even say do Gambit or Crucible. Do Strikes. Strikes was probably going to be the fastest way, especially if you do this in the team. If you have a team with you, then you can really just be vibing off of each other's uh, supers and whatnot. Don't forget to use a Master Rogue weapon. They drop modes of light as well or modes of power and yeah this one's not hard it's just annoying honestly after that you're gonna get another story mission which is awesome again there are different areas i really like that after that story mission's done you're gonna actually get to the the tedious mission like this is the annoying one for me but thankfully it's not as bad as i've seen other missions be it's just that you have to basically kill either guardians in pvp or champions Guardians count for 1% and champions count for 3%. So essentially 100 kills to complete the Crucible one or fifth or what is it? I think it, it might be. No, well, it's 3%. So it's not that long. It might be like 50 champions, maybe, maybe, but that doesn't make sense at all. Actually, it might be like 50 or less. So yeah, the champion ones is obviously really super fast, especially if you do it like in the Empire Hunt for this week. Had a lot of them. Or you can do a Nightfall. Or there's just so many things. The the Lost Sectors, the Legendary, and the Master versions all have those as well. Fucking hell, there's even random champions just wandering in Europa. So you can do that as well. But either way, I would say the Empire Hunt is probably going to be the fastest way. Especially if you have a team, you'll kill it immediately. Just know that for your champion to count, you actually have to damage the champion for it to actually count towards you. Unless it's a team, then it might just count for everyone. I did not do it with the team, so I can't really say anything on that. After that, you'll get one last mission. And in that mission, you'll actually get Hawkmoon. You'll be able to use Hawkmoon while uh, fighting the enemy. And honestly, from the small window of time I had to use this weapon, felt very nice, felt fucking cool. Feels like Hawkmoon, thank fucking god, it feels like Hawkmoon, shoots like Hawkmoon, sounds like Hawkmoon. Uh, they did a really amazing job with it. And let's look at the weapon. So yeah, obviously after that mission, you, you, get, the, you get the weapon and nothing else so far. And you'll see why i say so far so let's look at the weapon itself hawk moon stock thy prey and let loose thy th talons upon the darkness i love this weapon uh don't know if this weapon was associated with light in destiny one but again i'm not gonna say anything about that because I, obviously i don't know but let's look at the weapon perks corkscrew rifling for the slightly increased range and stability and increase in handling speed Alloy magazine for the faster reloads when the magazine is empty and then transformative. I'll let you know what that means in a bit. And then smooth grip. Slightly increases stability, slightly increases handling speed. Now, before I start talking about transformative, let's look at the intrinsic trait, which is paracausal shot. Final blows and precision hits with Hawkmoon grants stacks of paracausal charge. The final round in the magazine deals bonus damage based on the number of stacks and stowing Hawkmoon on the final round removes this bonus. So any any ability, class ability, any exotic that overrides re reloading or gives you like oh, ammo to the weapon, any type of thing that you can think of, it's not going to override it. Even if it's not the last shot, you'll lose charge. I've tried this with Lucky Pants, 
with Titan's uh, middle tree arc plus their reload barrier. I've tried this with transversive steps with Warlock. I've tried literally almost everything I can think of and it does not override the charges or the last round in the magazine. So when I say override, I mean like Lucky Pants, for example, if you stow your, like, let's say I get two charges of Paracausal Shot. If I stow my weapon and try to get some headshots with another weapon, because if you guys don't know Lucky Pants, essentially when you have a stowed hand cannon, the weapon that you're actually getting headshots with grants ammo to the stowed weapon which is a hand cannon once you do that you actually lose all your charges so you can't kind of like go up to like only two shots before you you uh cause paracausal shot to, to actually activate you can go like to the second last shot stow it and then use lucky pants to get more ammo because you lose the charges you can't you can't do pretty much anything which is fine i really don't mind it's just weird so let's look at let's look at some of the cool things about this weapon itself it's the fact that corkscrew rifling so barrels the grip and the trait can all be random rolled this is the first exotic weapon that we can actually random roll i've seen a lot of people speak their concerns about oh well it's hard to get weapons specifically specific weapons from exotics so this is going to be hard to farm which is fair it's very fair i like the idea of getting random rolls on exotics and it's definitely a cool idea considering that like this one the pair the pair causal shot is a very strong strong perk or intrinsic trait and i like it because it can roll with some pretty cool stuff i'm not gonna go through the barrels i might go through the grips but let's look at the perks themselves you can get opening shot range finder moving target killing wind snapshot sights eye of the storm hit fire grip quick draw and surplus for the grips you can get smooth grip which is i think the one that i have on right now you can get combat grip greatly controls recoil heavy grip increases stability decreases handling speed polymer grip increases handling speed and then texture grip greatly increases handling speed slightly decreases stability and obviously you can get all the barrel perks as well i would probably try to get like something like full bore or maybe small bore something to really increase that range more and then for for the random rules i would probably go for like quick draw killing wind or rangefinder honestly for controller players you can obviously go moving target that one was going to be really good um i it's just really weird to talk about random rolls in an exotic but it's cool as well because i can imagine hawkman being really gross with killing wind so that's pretty much all of the stuff pertaining to hawkman's actual weapon loadout Let's talk about let's talk about PVE first because I feel like we got to get through this one first just because in PVE it's going to be a lot more viable in PVE because in PVP I don't think it's that much that viable but at the same time I do it's really weird so in PVE the damage of paracausal shot actually does escalate a lot especially to 6 to 7 shots so it stacks up to seven shots for paracausal. Obviously you have seven shots in the magazine, but then let's say you get all headshots, which means you have seven paracausal shots. That seventh is gonna do meaty damage. Obviously I have gameplay of it right now. I'm gonna have all the stacks in a uh, descending order, but from one to seven, seven is just fucking bonkers. This is how much damage I do to Carl and it's, it's pretty wild for a hand cannon no less to do this much damage when all you have to do is keep hitting your headshots i love it. it it awards people giving you um headshots and i know people are well that's what you, sh you should do yeah but like it's still great to be rewarded for that because i could just get like a like an assault rifle and just spray and pray pretty much i like the fact that 
you're getting a bonus to what you have to do because it's not all oh, you will you would do that it's like you have to do that getting headshots it should be the best thing to do so bungie awarding people to get to get their headshots i think is great because it just means you you, you learn to do what you have to do it's like a good habit to always go for the headshot so i don't know for me personally i like it let's talk about why it sucks in pvp though so and i don't want to i don't want to say it sucks in pvp because it's actually pretty decent it's just the fact that hawk moon turns into a weapon that needs help to clean up and what i mean by that is let's say you get four stacks of paracausal shot if I remember correctly, four shots is not an insta kill, but it's super close. And at that point, you actually have to switch out from the weapon to actually clean up. So for me, an SMG, a scout rifle, or a scout rifle. So for me, an SMG, a sidearm, any of those type of weapons that you can pro pull out really fast to clean up is going to be really good with Hawkmoon. Hawkmoon is definitely going to be a weapon that you can use with another primary and it, it'll actually feel good because if you are hitting your headshots with hawk moon you're gonna you're gonna be cleaning up enemies a lot and i think the only reason people don't like that is because people remember the pretty much the power of hawk moon sure it was random but you could get one taps randomly and for me i understand why they don't want rng in the game but it really takes that that mysticism away from Hawkmoon and just makes it into like honestly I don't like this iteration of Hawkmoon that much just because don't get me wrong I don't think it's the headshots I think he you going for headshots is awesome but if you were to ask me I would have given this weapon uh Luna's house like it's OG perk I would have immediately gone for that just because you're actually having to hit your shots with this one it just feels not random but it feels random it's really weird i i love this weapon uh it shoots great it feels great look at the fucking stats on this weapon it's great it just feels like a better it feels like a legendary weapon with an okay roll like it's it's really weird it's so fucking jarring because I love the weapon. It shoots great. The stats are great. Everything's really great about it. It's just that would you switch this to like your god roll insert 140 here? Not nah, I don't think you would, especially since you could use other exotics. That's the thing. It's like Hawkmoon, can you really replace the the like the exotic that you're already using? Especially like if you're using Ace, uh Thorn, even Stern, bro those three weapons alone is just gonna feel a lot better than hawk moon stern specifically because of the range that it can get the thorn obviously is just a powerhouse it's stupid it's good and ace of spades is just it has pretty much everything and when you compare it to hawk moon hawk moon just seems so a lot less desirable which is unfortunate because it was the trio back in the day but unfortunately i don't think a lot of people is just gonna take their time to dedicate just learning this weapon's ins and outs because they're the weapon is fun like especially some of the matches i've had right now specifically like there's one titan match that i had where i was just fucking destroying people granted i had a lot of shotgun kills but hot moon did help clean up a lot of things as well it's just very unfortunate that the weapon does not feel as strong as ace of spades or thorn uh i think it might be on the same level as like stern somehow but stern can get some stupid ranges and especially if you can if you pair it with the uh the sidearm that it came with then dude it's even better so for me hawkmoon in my opinion is definitely like a b tier to a tier weapon but it's not it's nowhere near as a spades level it's nowhere near thorn level and it's unfortunate to say that because again in destiny one the trio existed because you could either you could use either or and it was going to be fire either way and hawk moon just feels like this iteration of hawk moon does not feel good at all like 
I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I love this weapon. It's one of my favorite weapons from Destiny 1. It's, it literally is one of my favorite weapons from Destiny 1. It, I've never not loved this weapon. And it just doesn't feel like Hawkmoon. It doesn't feel good. The weapon itself feels fine, but it just feels like a really good 140 legendary hand cannon. Like the paracausal shot in PvP is just under underwhelming as fuck. Obviously, once you get it rolling and you start getting more more paracausal shots, it is better, but it doesn't feel good when you have like four or five stacks of paracausal shots and you can't get that one tap. And I think that's what people are gonna miss the most is the fact that there's not gonna be that moment of like, oh fuck, I got that one tap. It's gonna be like, oh shit, like I'm at six stacks, all right, maybe I can maybe I can get it. And then you whiff the shot because obviously you won't get every shot because you're not a fucking aimbot. And then that's like, okay, cool. That could have been one shot, but I fucking whiffed my shot. And it's just, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I do think the idea of giving us different barrels grips and perks is cool i think it's a cool idea it's just that if bungie doesn't leave us a way to like acquire said random rolls then i think that's where people are going to have a lot of annoyances especially since this is an exotic weapon so they're not it's not going to go any, anywhere anytime soon and i know people are going to say oh well yeah it's not it's not going to go any anywhere anytime soon so you can just keep farming like casually but the problem with that is someone like me who's gotten all the weapons and all the armors my my loot pool for exotics is just fucking vast like it's everything at this point so i think the best way to do it would be to like open up a hunt specifically for like season of the hunt or whenever that weapon came out personally i would like it if like beyond light had a specific thing to get more hawk moon weapons like, like obviously make it like oh you have a 50 percent chance of getting a hawkman or whatever but there's just so many things that i would love to fuck around with honestly i would love to get a roll with each of the, like opening shot range finder moving target killing wind snapshot sights out quick draw and then surplus i would love to get a roll with all of them just to feel how they feel because quick hit fire grip and eye of the storm are definitely not gonna get i i hate those two so the other thing is like let's say you do get that killing wind but you get a god awful barrel and a god awful grip like rng on an exotic like it it doesn't feel like a bad idea but i feel like in hindsight it's gonna be oh yeah that, that was a bad idea i don't know why we thought it was gonna be a good idea i feel like we're gonna say that because again if they don't give us a way to actually farm for these weapons that have got a uh, random rolls because i'm just saying like if they plan to do more weapons that have a uh, random roll then i want to i want a way to we can actually go for that specific weapon and not be like you have a chance to get any exotic no i want a specific chance to get that weapon so that's pretty much it that's the weapon let me know what you guys think in the comments below like i said guys me personally i just Ah, <sighs> it's very unfortunate because I love Hawkmoon. Uh, it's one of my favorite weapons from D1. The ornaments from D1 are fucking fire. If I have, if I, uh, if I can find them, I'll put the pictures up right now. But very unfortunate that I can't get those back because I think some of them are fucking cool. But Hawkmoon's back in the game. I'm definitely gonna be using this weapon in PVE. Like this is gonna be a weapon I will be using in PVE for PVP. If I'm just chilling, then yes. Because most of the time, I don't usually put like an exotic weapon for PvP. I'm always usually using like a legendary weapon. So like, I'm not, I don't use Ace that much. I've used it more this season than any other season. Uh, same thing for Thorn, Sturm I've also used more this season than any other season. So for me, this will be the replacement to like an ex or to a legendary hand cannon that I usually use. So. Hawkmoon I will use a lot only because it's Hawkmoon. I love the sound of it, the feel of it, everything of Hawkmoon. It's great. But it's the paracausal shot that really bumps me out because in PvP, realistically, you're not always going to be getting that headshot. And I understand why they probably did it that way because then it, it could feel like, oh, that one tap 
possibility like i get why they did that but it's not the same like it's not the same of me just shooting someone in the face and then that one lucky shot instant killing that one person and for the people who are like well don't have don't put rng in a, in a gunfight like bro just let me have fun like it was crazy it was wild that shit made whatever no let me know what you guys think about the gun itself if you guys want to follow me on my social media i'll listen to in the description below thank you everyone for the support i really do appreciate it i have other content planned for a lot of stuff honestly so stay tuned and i will see you guys later